Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it, and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing what might be the most convincing argument against buying a Rolex Datejust 41. This is the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra Automatic. 41.5 millimeters in diameter. It's a timepiece that's easy to wear at only 48.5 millimeters lug to lug. The spacing between the lugs is 20 millimeters, and the timepiece is a reasonable 13 millimeters thick. So it's an easy one to wear under a cuff, it's an easy one to wear on a small wrist, and it's a watch that's equally appropriate on the boardwalk or the boardroom. This is a timepiece that is arguably the most versatile watch Omega makes, and you can see it's the Surf Turf Seamaster in as much as it doesn't feature a bulky dive style bezel. So this time piece has urbane manners as well as the heart of a true sports watch. Let's talk about how it fits on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist. I've had some folks say that I show watches too close and that I need to back off a little. I'm always trying to show condition details, but you can see the watch in proportion on my wrist is an easy one to wear. Jumping back in so you can see all those details. The strap as fitted is a wonderful rubber piece. First of all, the outside is so velvety smooth with a satin finish that makes it almost feel like calfskin leather. I didn't know for a fact that it wasn't calfskin until I turned it over and saw the embossed pattern on the underside. That's how intriguing both the tone and the texture of this strap is. The clasp is a handsome piece and Omega fans will recognize it well. You can see that it's a twin trigger system, so very secure, it can't pop open, it's not friction fit, and there's no cheap clamshell. Triggers are always the way to go. Internally, there's a minderless system, so you can tuck the strap underneath, and once you size it, it stays anchored, and there's no excess length flapping in the breeze, no minder loops on the strap. It's a design that's both secure and clean on the wrist. The case is simple. You'll recognize the satin-finished sheer sides from innumerable Seamasters and Speedmasters over the years. You can see a handsome, relieved and polished Omega logo against a blasted center on a deeply knurled crown, and that slight revetment or countersink of the crown, characteristic of the pre-2017 aqua terrace, and you can see that the polished bevels are present and correct. Polished conical bezel, but minimalist. The dial is exceptional because it features a sort of graphite gray, and it's a handsome striated teak deck style, and this teak deck, as Omega calls it, is designed to recall the deck of a yacht, as in some respects, the Aquaterra is aimed squarely at the Omega Yacht, or I should say the Rolex Yacht Master collection, and this is a timepiece that certainly puts up a fight. It uh, doesn't have a rotating bezel, but then again, it does have a wonderfully detailed dial. Applied Omega logo, applied Omega marquee, broad arrow, vintage-inspired minute hand, easy to read, luminescent index on the seconds hand. I don't know why every sports watch doesn't have a loomed seconds hand, but Omega's doing things right. There's an outer step to the seconds and minutes track with... Uh, Arabic numerals every five minutes or seconds, and all applique high loom indices for the hours. The watch is a coaxial chronometer, as promised, and 150 meters water resistant. There's a handsome polished and faceted aperture for the date disc, and the watch is a wonderful traveler's piece. As you can see, you can adjust the hour without actually stopping the watch, making it an ideal traveler's watch. Even for those who are crossing the international date line in either direction, the watch can account for that. You can also pull the crown out all the way, and now you've got a hacking or stop seconds function. Oh, Mega, unlike Rolex, lets you see that for which you've paid. Turning it over, you can see the purpose-built Caliber 8500. Why is this important? Well, it's very important because the Caliber 8500 was the first purpose-built Omega coaxial, meaning it combines all of the potential precision and extended power reserve that the coaxial brings with it with Rolex levels of impact toughness. And some of those features include a full balance bridge with a free sprung index, which you see for shock resistance. The watch is an automatic winder bi-directional, so it has no unweighted rotor wobble. The tri-level coaxial with tangential contact of escape wheel and escape surfaces. It's actually a quirky 25,200 vibration per hour beat rate. The screws are blackened rather than blued or polished, and there's a spiral arabesque Cote de Genève across bridges and rotor. You can see that the watch is nicely executed, and with twin mainspring barrels, it gives you a burly 60-hour power reserve and the real advantage of two barrels having an even torque release from maximum wind to minimum wind. So not only does the watch keep excellent time when it's wound up, up, but it keeps excellent time even as it's nearing the end of the road. This is a watch that gives you a lot of features for the money, as well as robust luminescence and water resistance. You can see and take the plunge, or not, with the Surf Turf Seamaster. That's the pleasure of this watch. It's not just designed for the sea. Stay high and dry, if you wish, with the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra, available on the watch box. A coaxial and a COSC chronometer, Omega Seamaster Aquaterra.